What's going on guys, my name is Steve from the Checkpoint, the gaming channel offering three straight days of X Games coverage and today we're going to be having a recap of day one at the MLG X Games Invitational, just in case you were unlucky enough to miss the stream. So let's get straight into it, we're going to be talking about the players and the pace of the games and the atmosphere of the matches and anything that caught my eye really, so Strictly Business versus Evil Geniuses. Now Evil Geniuses look very confident going in, obviously they're one of the strongest teams in the game, if not the strongest team in the game, they're definitely the most feared and uh, SB were written off as one of the weaker teams as they usually take a backseat for the Envies and the Optics to take the uh, centre stage so EG look to be playing a bit slower than usual which is odd as they're usually aggressive in their playstyle but um, Strictly Business played surprisingly doing very well against the most dominant force in competitive gaming um, one thing to note about this game that caught my eye was uh, the spawns. Now, EG got very lucky with the spawns on Domination. TP got a particularly advantageous spawn to spawn in, and um, the Domination ended very closely, with the match being decided by literally 0.1 seconds. So, uh, props have to be given to Fizzup, John, Spacely, and Stainville for putting up a valiant effort against the Intimidating EG, but the spawns were against them that day, and that's why EG took the games 3-1, uh, some believe that if the spawns were as bad, SB would have had the 2 um, potentially the win overall, which I would agree with as spawns play a heavy role in domination, however you should never underestimate EG by any means, as there is a reason they are the most feared team in Call of Duty history. Team Caliber vs Optic Domination, Optic Domination, Optic Nation, Domination, Game 1 is what I meant to say, on Strike Zone. Uh, teams trading back and forth, TK get early B control. Now. The team, the, what I liked about this series is that the teams were very level, going back and forth, there were lots of players being traded around the map, and um, they both leveled out over time, and it very much throughout the whole series worked on pace. Now, if one team slowed down, the other one would jump straight on that. I mean, um, take this match for example, Strike Zone on Domination, Game 1, uh, Optic Nation took Game 1 by 6 points because TK kind of slowed down and then in round 2 they found that fire again and the slaying power and rotation of uh, TK um, finding the aggression again, getting middle map control, gave them game 1 domination. Uh, Nezla and Goonjout were very impressive in terms of slaying power may I add. So yeah, the pretty much the whole series depended on uh, the players finding that aggression. Now Ricky at one point it was the uh, blitz game on Warhawk, Ricky played very poorly. I, can't remember how negative he went but it was pretty bad um there was a phenomenal defense from tk there was just no defense on optics end all aggression trying to make sneaky plays but um it ended 10-5 on that blitz game three after some amazing offense from goonjar and apathy and uh you know just solid solid defense solid offense just a brilliant all-round game from them and uh, that's why uh they took down, Team Calibre took down Optic Nation, sending them down to face uh, Strictly Business while they themselves moved on to face Evil Geniuses. Optic Gaming vs Phase Red. Now, Clayster, Nadeshot, Scumpy and Proofy took round one of Domination on for it very easily, making it 105-60 to 60, and it was very comfortable for them, it seemed, in the first round. But then, um, Jacob's team, Phase Red, came back uh, quite a bit. They tried to recover from the 45 point deficit they suffered in round one, but Optic very quickly regained B control, building off momentum and getting very hyped in the sound soundproof booths, which by the way, can I say was very useful knowing how much Clay and Scump were screaming and the green wall just trampled Phase Red, building off the hype. The Optic Gaming are a team that very much relies on momentum and that's why uh, in this game, in s &D Game 2, on Warhawk, um, at one point they were up 4-1 four, four and the momentum was there, but then after taking down a round, after uh, Fizz taking a round from them, they kind of lost that that prowess. It slowed Scumpy down, uh, Clayster and Nade shot were uh, making some some plays later on which actually um, brought the uh, the the score limit back up to 5-4 after an intense final round Nadeshot pulled out the ace to put an end to Faze's comeback using the MTAR to put an end to Jcap after a very intense final round. Uh, the Blitz was uh, very um, it was very unusual because I've, I've seen Optic Gaming uh, practice uh, Blitz Game 3 a lot not really much um, on uh, Faze Red's end but um, what I did see was some impressive plays from Clayster 
uh, and then the slaying power of red brought the score back up to 8-5 and it was a quick uh, counter capture from Optic that took it to 8-6 straight after that so it was like they were going back and forth again just like uh, Team Calibre was in uh, their previous matches but however after a slowed down final minute from Optic Fierce took the map 12-8. Now game 4 on strike zone Optic took CB control fairly quickly but Fierce forced the C cap and pushed Optic into rotation. Uh, grenades were very prominent in this match several taking out uh, Fierce members mid capture and then uh, Optic dominated the first round fairly comfortably with no real contest being brought by Red. Optic are very good at domination and then we have uh, Nade Shot and Clayster, you know, objective players, one being up close and personal, the other long range. Peruvian Scump, the two being Slayers, one up close, the other uh, an AR player, so it's like a nice parallel. And that parallel, I believe, won this strike zone dom and uh, they showed it in real force. Optic Gaming took the series 3-1 through impressive play and smart moves sending Phase Red down to the loser's bracket. Team Envy vs Curse Orange, Dom gained one on strikes and so Envy established map control very quickly, the communication was just sublime, extremely on point, very accurate, the team of Merc, uh, Nameless, um, Parasite and Study, they were just, they were a dominant force in terms of communication and it really was on point and very accurate, they shut down middle map fast and they didn't let Orange gain any points from B pretty much in the first round. Now aggressive play from Parasite and the priority of the home flag B system made that uh, the strategy they were uh, producing here very um, very concise and it kind of was hard to get through that wall they had up of the, just the slaying power. Um, they were spread out watching as many cutoffs as possible and Envy looked very organised and impressive. However, Kess threatened with some bigger players on B and pulled the score back after some sloppy play. However, Envy made a narrow victory, finding that fire again that had middle map control on lockdown and won the dom. So, um, there's nothing really to say about SND. Uh, Envy won that again. We had a Study, I believe, on the Sniper, making some very impressive plays, but that was really the centre point of it. And uh, going into Blitz on Game 3, and just like Game 1, the communication was impressive between Envy, but the game remained rather close and level. Teams never really had... Uh, they were never really jumping ahead of each other. However, after some back and forth gun battles all over the map, Envy scavenged an 11 to 9 victory over Chaos Orange. So, going into the next day of the X Games, the matches taking place will be Strictly Business vs Optic Nation, Team Galiba vs Evil Geniuses, Phase Red vs Chaos Orange, and finally Optic Gaming vs Envy, the fabled rivalry. So, I hope you can tune into the next uh, episode of this series and to the next stream of the X Games. It's really fun to watch. It's nice to get some competitive gaming in uh, into your life. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions about what went down, then please leave a comment. Subscribe if you liked the video. And like the video if you, well, liked it. So uh, this has been Steve from The Checkpoint. And I will see you in the next video.